And we're off again. Another amazing guest on the show today. We've got founder and CEO of Connect Commercial Real Estate, Daniel Ceniceros. Daniel, how are you today? Hey, Bob. Thanks for having me. It's a great day. Yeah, Good fantastic. Well, um, let me take you back about a year or so ago, maybe maybe eight months, uh, when I initially called you and said, you know, Daniel, I'm thinking about doing a, a podcast or, you know, some kind of a video video series. Do you, do you remember that phone call? And, and do you get many calls like that? I, I don't get many phone calls like that, but I, I do remember the phone call. And I do remember um, the conversation because it, it was like one of those things where you were asking a lot of questions, um, but applause to you, you dove in, um, you listened to everything we talked about. <laughs> you asked a lot of questions and you've been doing it consistently. You have some great guests. I'm, I'm honored to be on. I, I mean, it, it's great to be along on the ride and see this grow. Uh, it's for me, it's a testament because I'm constantly telling my, my commercial real estate or my finance clients, Hey, you know, if you're going to get into that space and you're going to do some video, do it consistently. And, uh, and they, you know, everybody kind of glazes over when you say that because it, it takes a lot of bandwidth to do something like this. Yeah. And here we are uh, 15 weeks later. So I think this is the 15th episode and you're, you're the, the special guest. So we appreciate you, you being on. I'm happy to be here. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it all started with an idea. You built out a website, then you started doing the interviews and yeah, congratulations. Well, so obviously I know all about Connect and what you do um, because we work together. But for those who don't, maybe give us the two minute elevator pitch on, on Connect Commercial Real Estate. You know, Connect Commercial Real Estate, it's our own ecosystem. You know, we, we want to inform the industry. We want to um, service the industry. And so we have three business lines. One is, you know, our information part, which we're sending out a million emails a week. Um, throughout all the markets throughout the US. So we have national news and then all the major markets from New York to California and in the middle. And, um, and then we also have our webinar division where we're doing a lot of events. Um, obviously we did live events before the pandemic, but we've done over 400 webinars with some great clients um, through the pandemic. And then um, we have our Connect, um, uh, Connect Creative. And Connect Creative, um, you know, we're helping people, what we say, go from an analog world of commercial real estate to digital. So picking a CRM, building a website, hosting their website, um, social media, video, um, you name it. Um, every, everything, content, PR, um, you know, helping them with investor relations. Everybody seems to have some sort of fund or, you know, for acquiring properties or lending, um, some sort of REIT part. But that's it. We can create the assets. We can get the message out. Um, we can help you with the events. And so we, we just are very uh, happy being a part of the CRE industry. And so that's what we do. We connect people. So you started the company in 2015, which I was surprised. I thought it was actually around for a lot longer than that, uh, which is a testament to your to your branding. And the, like you said, the uh, amount of emails that I get every day. Um, which is fantastic. But uh, how did how did you get started in 2015? What, what were you doing before? And what made you kind of flip the switch and say, I'm going to go out on my own and, and do something? So it was actually in 14, you know, you, we incorporated December 14. Um, but before that, you obviously have an idea, right? So you know, you have the idea, you think about it. Um, but you know, I guess I would say, you know, I was I was at Globe Street. I'd been at Globe Street, you know, was kind of running Globe Street. I was running their events. I was working within the industry and I'd been doing that for about 15 years. Um, and I just felt like, you know, it was time to start my own business. It was time. I, I felt like I would built my personal brand within the industry and trust within my clients. And so I had loved the industry. It, it, it had given me so much, it had given me a career and, and a lot of really good friendships. So uh, there was no way I was going out of the industry. So I just decided that why, uh, why not do my own thing? Um, the big question though, that I always say is, you know, everybody says, you know, what took you so long? <laughs> That's <laughs> always the big part of it. Right. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, it's cause I was standing on an edge, you know, I have two daughters, you know, and, 
you have, you know, yep. you just build a life around all those things. And, you know, you know, college is coming and all those good things and responsibilities. And you're looking over that edge and looking over that edge and getting that scary feeling in your stomach. Um, but it's, you know, you finally take that drop and you got it. Yeah. Well, and then I'm lucky I get to talk to a lot of entrepreneurs on, on the show. And, um, you know, there, there always seems to be a time that they go through where they think, you know, I'm screwed. This isn't going to work out. You know, <laughs> what am I going to do now? Uh, was there a time like that for you? And how did you push through that? God, I always say, you know, that edge that you look over, you know, you free fall over that edge. And sometimes you're spreading your wings and you're just feel like you're flying. And sometimes you're just running into stuff like branches and everything on the way down. And it just, it just feels like every speed bump is just knocking you off your access. And you, you feel so great. Um, you know, just a lot of hard work. I mean, I don't, I think everybody says that. And I think it's, I hate to say it's cliche, but you just don't expect how hard you're going to work. You think I'm starting my own business because I'm, I'm going to play more golf. I'm going to do my things. Yeah. My, my, my schedule was flexible around my being able to be at my daughter's games or, you know, all those different things show up for parents at college, do all those things, but didn't mean that you didn't make up those hours at some point. Um, it, you made up those hours times 10. And so I would say that, you know, it, 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 one of those things that they just don't tell you that you don't get, that you have to get ready for is the hard work, but hard work. I always say, you know, the harder I work, the luckier I get it. it, it if you just, if you really just bust your ass on every situation and you really dive into it, you know, not, not, not 95%, 110% of every problem you'll get out of it. It, it you know, it, it's, there's tomorrow's, but you have to give it that 110%. It's the people that walk, look at that problem, whatever it might be. You, sometimes you're going to run into cash flow problems. Sometimes you're going to run into tax. You're going to wonder like I didn't file some tax in New York or all these things they don't teach you you're going to have or you're going to have a problem with an employee or someone vital is going to leave and you're just going to have those situations but if you don't jump into that problem at 110 percent and give it your 110 percent you won't get out of it 110 percent you'll you'll just you'll it'll, it'll be lingering and so every time there's just a piece of triage i, I jump into it at 110 percent and and that's what's really just helping with all those things and you mentioned new york and i know you are in um you know, markets across the country now. So tell me a little bit about that growth from really a Southern California company to start with to now uh, I get emails and information from me from, you know, every, every market. Well, this, this is the not entrepreneur's idea. I was just going to be in California, Bob. I was just, I was just <laughs> going to be in California because, you know, I was born and raised here and why not? There's enough in California. And then, you know, halfway through it, I was just going to send out one email and the next thing you know, it's, I'm just going to be in Texas. And then all my clients were like, Daniel, we love you, but we're a national company. We're based in California, but we're a national company. Okay. Well, I guess I'm a national provider. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then every market in between there from Seattle to Florida, Atlanta, you know, DC, Boston, I mean, real estate's a regional business. You'll hear me say that a lot, but it's just one of those things. Each market is different and you have to be in those markets. And so, it, it, we just grew with our customer and our customer was the industry. And as we know, California, yes, it's a big state. It's a great state, but a lot of our clientele in California or New York or Chicago or Texas, they're all doing business outside of, of the area. You know, I had a stat that was given to me, um, at Marcus and Millichap. Um, I, I was reading one of their stats. They have their 50th anniversary this year and their stats said, over 40, like it was a huge, it was a huge stat. It was like 25 to 35% of deals in the, were done outside of, from outside of their market. It was just like a crazy number that people, so they were running their, you know, this advertisement that's going to be about these different markets. And you're like, wow. So that means all those deals that happened in Arizona from people from outside of Arizona or outside of Houston or outside of Chicago, it's just, the reach of people has just been phenomenal. And it's, you know, it's, it's just part of, you know, technology and growing up. And so I think that's how we expanded. And um, it's it's been a great expansion. And we have great team members in, in across the US. We're not, 
we're California, but we've got Cal we've got, you know, out of the just under 30 at Connect, they're all over the country. So how does that work? So you've, you've got the, the news advertising side of the company, as you mentioned, the events and then uh, on the creative marketing on the news cycles and, and the news team. Um, you know, you don't know if you have to be in every market physically or not, but how do you gather all of that information every single day? Well, we've been for at the beginning. The first couple of years was really hard. Um, you had to build momentum. And, and, and thanks for saying that we that's what we really worked on momentum build momentum and so we really just worked on we had to seem when there was just two of us and it was you know I, I remember looking over and it was me and then Sarah was sending out all the emails and I was just like we send out more we've got to seem bigger than we are and then we you know we brought on one person and then we was like we got to seem bigger than we are and it, it started like that for the first couple of years and we were you know knocking down doors trying to get stories and that was half of our job. We had to get ad sales and everything else and, yeah. you know, conferences and you, you name everything else, but you still had to bang. You still had to have the information. You still had to be, you know, um, and it was good because we had relationships that we could get that information, but it, it was hard. Um, fast forward seven years, we, you know, we get hundreds of press releases a day now. Transactions, you know, from finance, development, new hire, you know, any of the trends that were in week, just mark, you know, pick the market. So we're fortunate that we built this brand that people trust and know that we're going to write the correct story. Um, you know, no fluff, no angles, just the story. And so, you know, that that's really where um, the growth has been exciting because during the pandemic, I thought, oh my God, like transactions are going to go way down. Yeah. What are we going to do with the news? Like what's going to happen? Yeah. No. And it, it hasn't slowed at all. The news we had, we doubled in readership. I mean, people had more time to read. And so it was just one of those things that, um, that, you know, longevity. And once again, that rep repetitive thing of being every day, we're reporting 50, 40 to 50 stories a day. That's larger than most news services. Forget real estate. Just talk about news services. There is, you know, you want to know about commercial real estate, you can get 40 to 50 pieces of content and connect new content every single day. Yeah, it's amazing just the amount of content that you produce uh, and, and that's out there. Let's switch a little bit to the uh, creative marketing side of things and and talk about some of the things like 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 this podcast and, and the other things that that you work on. Um, mostly. Are your clients, let's say, developers, um, you know, owners of buildings on the landlord side, real estate companies, lenders, kind of everybody that's in the space? You know, real estate's an interesting business, right? It's 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 a lot of individuals such as yourself. You have years of experience within working within the tenant space. And so as people come to us all the time and they have a single person, there may be two people, maybe three people, and they've been successful. And they've had successful careers and they're they have relationships and so they build these businesses around these relationships and this experience and then they think about marketing <laughs> so then it's like okay now we need to market it because this is so it's because they're the value proposition at, at, at the beginning right because that's really what what starts it off because it's just the name at those points like that so really so then the value proposition starts off and now they jump in with marketing marketing comes in and that's where a lot of connect is coming in because there's a lot of individuals that is happening with that that's happening with and so i would say that <clears throat> that is a lot of real estate real estate is an entrepreneurial business at heart although it is becoming very institutionalized and there is you know some consolidation there's in every market there is a lot of people that work within those um treated more like a neighborhood and so those people are coming up, they might be starting a fund, they might have a debt fund, they might need investor relations, they need a website, they haven't picked a CRM, they need hosting, um, they, they need help with social media. A lot of it is, you know, am I saying the right thing on LinkedIn? All those things are communications. We don't treat them as, you know, yeah, we have a robust PR division, we have a robust creative division, we have all those things, but we always treat it as like, what is your goal? Just like when we sat down with you, just like when we sit down with everything, it's like, what problem are you trying to fix? And most of the time is like, we need marketing. We had a great, um, I guess it's new business pitch yesterday. And I was sitting with the team and I said, you know, this is, 
we've heard this 10 times now. <laughs> this is the same thing. It's a great company. It's a thriving company. And now they want to think about marketing or they've been doing it this way. And now they want to try it a different way, which is digital. Like, how are we going to go out digital? How are we going to get out of reports? What are we going to work with? And so that's, that's a constant theme for us. And, you know, with the team, our creative director, Jennifer, who runs that division, to Dennis, who's running the PR parts, it's really it comes in the team because those are experienced people. We didn't hire, we, didn't, we, we have some young people that are coming up, but when we, when we built the team, we built, you know, 20 year experienced people, 10 to 20 year experienced people to say, sit across from the people that we're working with, developer, lender, owner, buy, build, sell, lease, finance, um, invest. Those are the people that we understand your business. So that's that's just really what it comes down because that's what people want to understand. So that that's really what we're doing on the Connect Creative side. We're the CRE in creative. Let's dig a little deeper there because that really interests me on exactly what it is that you're seeing from this group, what the trends in the digital marketing. Um, you know, I think, you know, I've been doing this a long time, as you mentioned, and we've gone from you know, you get a listing, you make a flyer, you send out flyers. Uh, and it's really been a slow, slow kind of change into this digital world. And I really have only jumped in, you know, about a year or so ago now, but it's, it's changing dramatically. Are, are the companies and the people that are coming to see you, are they saying, you know, we need to dramatically change the way that we do our marketing? God, it's, it's interesting. They are. Um, the industry just figured out they can't market in person for the last year and a half. And they, they've, it, it's been hard with the pandemic. And so they had to figure out what was my value proposition and how do I get my value proposition out there? Because a lot of the value proposition I talked about was, is, is a lot of the experience that people have of doing these transactions for many years and being able to see and, and see when there's going to be problems or what, you know, they, they sense those things. They can go with their gut. Now that's hard when you, when you're just looking at paper or you're, you know, you can't feel the, the movement of someone in a room. And so what well, it, it, it's, you asked about, you know, what's the marketing aspect of it in digital. It, yeah. People are trying new things. I mean, I have, but I still would call them the ABCs of digital marketing because, you know, we have a lender we're working with right now, great lender, national lender. You would think, you would think they've already done a pay-per-click campaign. <laughs> they have. <laughs> um, but we're, we're, we're about to launch it. And, you know, um, the other thing I would say is, and I'm probably shooting myself in the foot on this one because right now it's inexpensive, but to go buy out and buy keywords in commercial real estate isn't expensive right now because there's not a lot of people doing in real estate or commercial. Well, in real estate, when it comes to residential, like on the broker part and all that, that's, that's, that's a very busy area. Um, but on the commercial real estate, people haven't really focused on that part of it. So, you know, I can walk into a client, like we're walking in with this national lender and it's not going to cost them a lot of money on a daily average because the other commercial lenders aren't doing a lot of it either. Um, so, you know, on even, you know, maybe on the tenant rep side, maybe on the leasing side, on the development side, um, it, you know, developers have a little bit different about it when they're trying to get into a market and they have a development coming up and they want to win the market and, you know, have all the neighborhoods like them. We go on an integrity part of the neighborhood and how we're working on those things. That's a little bit more money because you have to buy Facebook ads and do different things like that. But developers weren't doing that a year ago or two years ago. You know, right. some developers still aren't doing it. You know, um, it's just some of those parts of it that you realize that it's, there's just different ways of marketing. Some of them are just the ABCs. Um, and once again, consistency of it. And, you know, there's so many different platforms now and you really have uh, a voice. I mean, I've got a voice here on, on this podcast and, and there's, you know, several other ways to do that. Are you seeing across the country, anyone who's really taking advantage of that or, or something new that, that someone or a company is doing? I can tell you, I can give you a great, we were fortunate enough to work with Walker and Dunlap and Willie Walker. He, he didn't have a podcast when the pandemic happened. He didn't have, and I wouldn't even, he didn't have, you know, these video interviews that he was doing. What he did is he pivoted quickly because they had an annual event that they had with all their investors. And he was able to pivot very quickly 
And now he's done it weekly. Now, in a lot of these markets, his team is back out and he's back out and he's he just had his first in-person interview, but he's not stopping. And so that's a perfect aspect of someone that, you know, did speak on panels and was visible, but is extremely, I mean, they're getting thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people at his interviews. That's someone that really embraced digital, that continues to work on it. And, and, and it's not going to stop. I mean, it's just not going to stop. We are fortunate to be along with the ride with them. We've been there since the beginning. We've helped them market it. We've worked on a lot of different parts of, you know, making it successful, but he took that step off of the ledge, jumped on, went into this whole new platform and it, and has great guests and continues and it continues to grow. So I have seen someone do it really well. Um, I've also seen people do it really well on the investment side, things you'll never see. Um, updating you know, <clears throat> investments or RIAs or doing some of their, um, you know, when they have different funds, they, they have these updates that are recorded via video or, you know, these Q and A's. Um, we also have the major institution do a virtual, their global top 100 sales event that was, you know, that was, they brought in all these people in San Francisco. We did it from their offices, right from their offices up in Silicon Valley. It's like two weeks ago. So there, there's people that are pivoting that are being very successful with it. And I mean, they didn't stop. They, we, they had a cooking class and they had all these different parts to break up the days. They had happy hours I and mean, they treated it and they took that, that step into the virtual world. And I know that it's scary. I, I hear it all the time. Like this is never going to last. Virtual is never going to last. Are you crazy? <laughs> this is over. Like we're all going back to events. Like, right? It's all, yeah. all going to be. It's all going to be fine. Um, and it, that's that's fine. I'm not taking that away from people. I, I think there will be a certain aspect of that. But get ready for, to embrace this new style of communications because you're right. Give somebody a camera and a topic and the right audience and give them some. Um, some consistency and they can they can make some waves and so you know our, our greatest event the greatest event we had at connect was our connect la event we had about 800 people it's one of our best events uh uh walker and dunlap <laughs> 10 times you know 10 times that on a weekly basis you know right, right. But, yeah so uh yeah that, that 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 shows me that it took me three months to four months to put on a a, one, a half day event and he does gets more in, in an hour. So yeah, I, I think we're changing. Yeah, the numbers are really amazing. How does that look then when we're talking about the in-person events? Will it be uh, virtual or like you said, something that's really consistent weekly and then a big event in person to, to kind of complement that? God, that's a hard, hard, hard question to answer. And, I, and I'm just gonna tell you how we're treating that connect. Um, Events was a third of our business when we when we hit the pandemic. Um, so it was hard to really. It was one of the hardest days of my career to stop doing events because I loved them so much. Hmm. Um, we have not, not have a. We do not have an event planned right now. Um, we are not in the events business. I'm. I don't want to be the first one. I don't need to be the first one. Um, I want to see how everything shakes out. Um, obviously, there's. You know, we're back under a mass mandate and. LA County starting Saturday. So I'm not saying that that's going to slow things down or what's going to happen. I just have decided that um, there's a, the world has changed and we're now recording history. And so everybody's going to ask, how did you deal with the pandemic? You know, what happened? What do they do? How do they deal with it? And so I'm just going to be very careful with all my steps. Um, and that includes just, you know, on the events, we'll continue to have webinars. Um, we'll continue to do video updates um, and then we'll wait and see. But, you know, I, I don't take that lightly because, like I said, it, it was a third of our business. We, we've managed to pivot and, and do well um, with virtual events and creative and PR and even with advertising but it, and content marketing. But I would say it's still um, it, I love them, but I also have to I'm also an adult and also accept that, you know, change happens every day. And so it's just one of those things that I, I have to look forward. What, what is that? What is it? What is events going to look like? Because I've been to a few events and I won't name them and they were not good. Hmm. They were very empty and people putting people on a panel. I don't know. 
I, I mean, I'd, I'd much rather watch a show like yours. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I would. I would. I'd rather. I'd rather watch yeah. Walker and Dunlap. I'd rather watch. You know, Verkey. I'd rather watch some of these finance ones. You know that. I. I. I'd rather spend that half an hour than, for you know, for a panel or some sort, than have to do that right now. And I hate saying it because I'm in a I love events. Um, but that's that's what we're that's what we're looking at right now. Well, speaking of change, uh, too. You know, I everywhere I go in a, in a social setting, at friends and and family are always asking me about uh, the future of office, right? And the the work from home situation and the hybrid model that some of these people are going to. You're so immersed in the real estate industry across the nation. What do you hear? Is there a, is there a trend that you hear from from time to time in different markets on on where they're headed with the with that? So I'll, I'll tell you the things that I, I hear out in the market and then the things I hear from my client and then us at Connect. Um, so the first part I heard, you know, I heard the CEO of CBRE talk about that office across the U.S. is going to settle about you know, somewhere between 75 and 85 percent. Um, he did it on CNBC, could have said, I think, 80 percent um, occupied. So I go, wow, OK, that's a big number. Um, and that's what he said as far as 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 far as that i look at my clients and they're they're busy they're they're out there you know looking at, at, at contracts you know you know bidding out space doing everything that they are doing there's a lot of momentum you know people are you know that fear of missing out thinking about those things looking at rates looking at you know what kind of amenities all those things so there's i i can tell you from my clients they're busy and, and you know how i know they're busy is because the first thing is, you know, they're, they're just like, we're too busy to do marketing right now. Just handle it for us. So <laughs> that happens quite a bit. So, yeah. so, you know, just make sure that make us look good. And so we do that quite a bit. And so the, um, the part of that, and so for us, I would say we moved out of downtown LA. We moved into uh, outside area, Los Feliz, Glendale of LA. We're still in a mixed use. We took more space. We've got great, this is more of a creative office with you know a kitchen and upstairs loft it's got all the amenities ping pong tables pools and gyms and all that junk um but it's got a front door so we walk in the front door we close the front door we park in a lot you know that that's guarded and and and, and underground and it's great and so we don't have to run into people and the team likes to come in here there, there's not a lot of us in california that has that part of it but i would say the other change is we used to have an office in um, bryant park most of the people in New York move, live in the outskirts now in New Jersey. Um, one has moved down to the North Carolina area. Uh, we have one employee still in New York. Um, she's working from home. Um, what we have done is we put jobs. We, we've, we've hired more people. We've grown. Um, we put jobs up and we don't put locations anymore. We just hire the best person in the nation. And we look for that and we, and we figure that part of it out. Um, but, but it is necessary for us to have representation in New York, in New Jersey, in we have some down in the Southeast now, some in Texas, some in California, in Chicago. So the team is spread across the US, but you know, will we have an office in New York? I don't think so. I just don't think so because we used to really look for talent in New York and California. And so we've just changed that mentality so will our office grow maybe in California? Maybe, but some people are down in San Diego. Some people are down on the outskirts. And so um, it's one of those things where I think that shift has really changed for us. It's, we're looking for the best person. Um, and then offices come second. Right, right. You know, what's interesting is it, it seems, well, it's different for everybody, right? For, mm -hmm. for every person at every company, the, the, the work from home model or hybrid or going back to the office, whatever you want to call it, it's different. Some people are going back and they're happy to be there and it's there's, they can't imagine it being any other way. And then for others, there's just little intricacies there that, that change the way that they look at it. Me, myself as a CEO, I hate it. <laughs> I want to be with the team. Yeah. I want to be with my team. I, I want to be with my team. I just went and had lunch with someone down in San Diego. I missed her. I hadn't seen her in forever. I, I'm flying out to New York. I'm going to do the whirlwind of, you know, 20 different stops throughout the U.S. to go see my team. Um, I don't like it. I, I, I really, we used to have places where we would meet. We'd have all those things. It, it, 
I understand when people say it, it hurts, it hurts the business. I understand when people say that it helps their business because they're, they're being more productive. But for me personally, as leadership, my, my whole job is to be a cheerleader. You know, <laughs> my whole job is to keep that the, the, and recruit and, and retention. So I don't, it's that we're successful because of our people. So I hate it, uh, but I, I got to live with it. So, you know, right. As for now, I'm going to make the effort and go around and see everybody. Last question. And one of the things I like to do on the uh, podcast here is, is, uh, you know, really make this as helpful to as possible to people listening. And so I wanted to ask you as, as the CEO and you've got a vision for, for the company, uh, what is it? Is, is there one thing that you do every day or every week to help kind of reset yourself to your vision when, when things start to go a little out of whack, let's say? That's a very interesting thing. So, um, yeah, and this is probably different than most people. So I spend, you know, there's times that, you know, there's times that you, they're so tough, just the toughest decisions that you have to make. Um, and so you have to have some you time. And so what is that you time? You know, sometimes it, for me, I, I might go to the gym and, or I might jump on a spin bike and take a spin class, but, or, you know, I might sit at a Starbucks, but if, if you don't take you time, um, and you don't do it every day to think about it and reset it, 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 it's, it's just there's there's too many things going at it and you will never it'll just stack up and become overwhelming so you almost have to pause and and like i said for me there's a lot of times i might take two spin classes in a day but i need a dark room to sit back and think about what the hell's going on with my day and something bad has happened or something good has happened or whatever it is you just need to have those times because if you don't spend that time taking that almost that exhale and I don't mean an exhale because it's not it's, it's the exhale and say let me think about what's the next step and everybody says you know yeah I'm telling everybody that's watching this be healthy do all those things I'm just talking about for myself yeah my me time is that and and find that because if you don't and I, I have children so I got to come home and worry about stuff so I, I have to find that work-life balance in between there where I can pause know that I come home and be a good family man, know that I can also be a good boss. And so those things collide when you're a CEO. <laughs> and so you have to draw those fine lines in there and say, you know, let me just think for 10 minutes. Let me pull over my car. Let me stop before I get home. And let me think about what I'm going to do about the situation in my mind. And, and if you don't do that, um, it, it, it just makes the, the, it will stay, it'll stay in your mind. You have to complete those things. And so that's, that's the one thing that I do. And I, I, I really do it every day and everybody calls me, Oh, you, you're a health freak. You do all these different things. I'm like, it's, it's my therapy. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. It's not a health freak. Like, I'm not in that room. I can't even hear the music. I'm thinking about, you know, what's going on with my employee and, you know, in Atlanta or some, you know, what's, you know, all those different parts of it. And so it's not even, you know, it's not even that thought process, but I do have those, those moments of that or, you know, all those other worries that you have. So yeah, I, I would recommend, you know, completing the task in your head. And, and first it starts, you have to make the task in your head, complete the task in your head. And then, and then that, that you got to do that on a daily basis because uh, that, that task list will just, it just eat you up. Daniel, great stuff. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for being part of the podcast here. And, uh, uh, congratulations on the on the continued momentum that you're seeing over there. Bob, it's always great to, to work with you and uh, congratulations on your success. Um, you have a good weekend. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Talk soon. Mm -hmm.